<laughs> this this is where I want to start. Mm. And since it's two of us and one of you, I'm going to let mm-hmm. you drive, right? You brought up... Well, first of all, before we do that, what was y'all's... And I'm going to start with you, John. What mm. was y'all's kind of take on the entire episode one after you went back and watched it? Like, were, were there certain things that su- su- surprised you? Certain things that didn't come up that should have? Certain things that... Um, did come up, but watching it back, you found a new, you know, perspective on it? For me, watching it back, um, I felt like the conversation was was mature mm. from all perspectives. You know, I felt like there was uh, a chance for everyone to get a chance to know each other mm. in conversation. I don't feel like there was too many bad points in the conversation, not too much controversy. Uh, everybody had a chance to share their voice. Mm. So I felt like the conversation went well to me. I didn't see any negatives in it. Mm. Same. What about you, boys? I honestly feel like... (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. I feel like there was... Oh, first and foremost, I I enjoyed it. Mm. I didn't think it was... a neg. I didn't see any negative in it. Um, And I also understand that no matter how much we have this conversation, a lot of times... It's like we're going to be banging our head against the wall because we say the same things Mm -hmm. and we're trying to get to the same thing. Mm -hmm. But there's a barrier that's always going to be there of Mm -hmm. y'all being men, us being women. Mm -hmm. So there's a level that you're not going to be able to understand. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where sometimes it can be frustrating because Mm -hmm. it's like you have the will, you have the skill. And I think it's probably on y'all's end too. It's like, Mm -hmm. come on, why can't you you sound like you're there, but you're not really there. Mm -hmm. I just feel like there was a bit of and probably more so on the female end, Mm. a bit of holding back Mm. from actual feelings and thoughts Mm. because it makes you passionate. Mm. And as a black woman, I understand that for us, passion comes out with louder voices and different gestures and stuff. So rather than come out of that character, you're just kind of mm. like, let me just not, let me just, I'm just hold it in. I'm not going to say nothing because I don't want to think I got an attitude or any mm. of that. So I think that played into some of the things from a female perspective mm-hmm. where maybe all ideas weren't shared on the female end. Mm. And like I said, if we're holding back, again, on the woman's side, it's like the man's side is frustrating because you don't hear what I'm saying, but I'm not really saying it, if that mm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Is that like was no clarity? No clarity because you're not clarifying your actual point. You're mm-hmm. trying. You're, you're like you're feeling it in here mm-hmm. and having the internal conversation, but it's not coming through this microphone so everybody else can hear it. Yeah, got it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, how, how do you feel about this? Because one of the comments that I saw a lot mm-hmm. was that the female side of the conversation didn't come in in good faith. Didn't come what? In good faith, as in like. <clears throat> A lot of people said you guys were listening to respond instead of listening to understand. When you say a lot of people, now I'll come back, was it the mm. men saying that? Yes, man. And that, that's, that's the block that I'm talking about mm. because, because, you know, I ain't read the comments because I know mm. better. Um, <laughs> but there's a block because of the fact that I can say a little bit of that passion, but it's also because as a man, you, you're hearing me, but you, you can't understand where I'm coming from because we're just different. I got a question. Mm-hmm. How how do we improve on that? How do how do men learn to listen more to a woman to where though we can understand? What's the solution to that? Honestly, you have to find a woman that makes you want to listen and understand and hear. And it's and truly, honestly, the best men that I know mm-hmm. still struggle with it with their with their partners, mm-hmm. their girlfriends, their wives, and it's not intentional. Mm-hmm. It's because of just who you are. Like my friend, all, I said, all my friends that are married mm. get frustrated with their husbands for like the same small things that happen. Mm. Like I'm trying to find a good example of it because it's, it's never the big things that are big and problematic. It's just mm. those little small things where I think in our minds, like, you should just know we've said it before. You should understand that we need you here, but a man's mind is more so this way. And women go all over. I feel like most women's argument that's in a relationship is that they don't feel seen. Or heard. They don't or feel heard. seen yeah, or heard. That's a and big that, thing. And that and that's what it is. That's one hundred percent. That's what I feel like y'all, you're listening, but you're not hearing what I'm saying. Mm. 
But it's because le legit, you just don't understand or pro you don't process it like I need you to or I want you to. And mm. I, I don't know how to combat that. Mm, that's a challenge. Like, I'll, I'll, put my, I'll use my brother as an example. Mm. My brother and his wife, they've been together for, before they were married, they've been together for years and years before that. Mm -hmm. But my sister-in-law's biggest like issues and woes with my brother are like, there, I already told you to do that. Mm. We've talked about this before. I said, I don't like it. Mm. And he'd be like, oh man, I forgot my bad. And he genuinely just forgot mm. because it wasn't something that was a big deal. Like I asked you to pick up some Clorox on the way home and you didn't do it. Mm. Those kind of small things, but it's mm. like, mm. I've asked you to do this a the million times, like you never done it, my bad. Can you go put the take trash out? Mm. How many times am I asked you to take trash out and you don't do it right then and the woman's mad? But the, the question is, do you think women actually listen better or that the narrative is that men don't listen as good? Because to be honest with you, when I watched it back, mm -hmm. I kind of agree with the comments because there were certain things. There were certain things that I would say or Joe mm -hmm. would say, and it was like. And maybe you disagree with me, mm -hmm. but there was a sense of like, you didn't hear what I said. Mm -hmm. You were just ready to make your next point. And it might be to your point about women thinking this well, because way, this way, we, this way. Yeah, y'all, because y'all think linear. You're thinking straight to your point. But the issue is sometimes in order to understand or drive home your point, you can't go straight to it. You have to take a detour. Think about when you're on the highway, you, you have your path. You go every day from Farmer to Greenville. Mm. But they're doing road construction. Mm. There's a detour you have to take. Gets you to the same place, but you got to go through a couple different turns to get there. Sometimes in conversations or in things, we get what you're saying, but in order to make you understand where we're coming from, mm. we have to peel back so that we can, and we like to explain ourselves. Mm. Women like to explain in a, in a full perspective. Mm -hmm. That's something that's what y'all say, oh, y'all talk, y'all talking too much, you're doing too much. It, we can't just be linear. Mm -hmm. But what's the middle ground then? Because if you're saying that men are linear and women mm -hmm. are more abstract and mm -hmm. getting to the point, we have three options. Either we can defer to the guy, and go do it his way. We can defer to the woman, do it her way. Or is there a middle ground where both people get it done in a way that is, you know, they might have to give a little, but at the end of the day, nobody feels like they had to just completely submit. I feel like it's honestly, the middle ground is the same, not just in those situations, relationships, it's, it's universal, it's mm -hmm. communication. But it can't be just that one time. It has to be consistent communication. I, I know for me, mm -hmm. I have to write sometimes before I can speak it. Mm. I have to, or I have to sit and think about it, but then I'm going to communicate it mm. because I can't let it sit and rest and rest. I, I was talking earlier, my girlfriend and I, we communicate in different ways, mm. but, and, but when we first started dating, she didn't want to communicate. There was a barrier there with her, but I'm going to force it because if we don't communicate, it's honestly like, it's honestly going to just fester and get bigger and bigger until it explodes. Mm. So I think that if we would all learn to just start communicating, even w even if it gets ugly sometimes, mm. start off the conversations with uh, let's let's lead with love. We may disagree, but let's respect each other in it. But let's talk about it. And if it doesn't get if it gets too heated, if it's not getting settled, then put a pause in it, leave it where it's at, go do something else, come back to it. But people don't know how to communicate, mm. and that's not not I said people, not men, not women. Some people don't know how to communicate. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I feel like the foundation to that is who's the first teacher? Somebody has to be the one that is able to take charge. Yeah, like who, who did the man grow up and learn from and who did the mm -hmm. woman grow up and learn from and then you mesh the two together, right? If mm -hmm. it's the same circumstance. Because you kind of see it as universal. Mm -hmm. It don't just hit just the black community, mm -mm. you know, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. You know, I got, a, I got a good buddy, you know, him and his wife do a lot of content. But when they're doing content, you can hear that a lot of times she don't grasp what he's saying, mm -hmm. right? And he's of a different, you know, uh, origin. But it's like, is this just for us or is, is it just a universal thing? Two-way street. Where, uh, where women just don't understand men and you know what the I think totality it is. of the world. Is it just this whole thing going on and it seems like that to me from my observation what about you i i i agree and i think that's this is why we're doing this like i think a lot of women have a it's this sense of 
by default, I'm right. Mm -hmm. And you have to prove to me why you're right. Mm -hmm. Right. By by default, my way is better. Just like we're talking about the different approaches Mm -hmm. to conversation. A lot of women come in thinking that the default should be her way. Because a lot of women are emotionally expressive. They think they're emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not until they run into a man who's actually emotionally intelligent that it makes them have to reconsider what they Mm -hmm. thought emotional intelligence was. But I will say our culture celebrates this idea of you can't tell me shit. Like, look, and and I think think Lizzo's current situation is a perfect example of that. People were talking about she's so brave, this, this, and that. And now she's being sued for calling her dances fat. Mm. and making them eat bananas out somebody's pussy. Mm. So, again, this... And it, I think the same goes for men, but, like, if you create a culture where people are unchecked mm. yeah. for their behavior, for whether sure. to themselves or to others, it only, like, it, it builds on itself, and then you have narcissists, yeah. mm-hmm. whether it's Lizzo or anybody else. For sure. But I think what, what's happening now because of the overcorrection of, like, female empowerment and girl power, it's creating a lot of narcissism in women like most women you ask them what happened in your last relationship well he dot 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 most women aren't able to even conceptualize what they did wrong and i think that's what a lot of men are seeing and right now you're seeing men start to speak up Mm -hmm. and say that oh hold up i'm not always the problem hold Mm -hmm. up nah she was the problem and i think a lot of people can't deal with that yeah i I agree i I agree that uh i'm sure most women feel that way too but in most uh, household where there, where there are relationships, mm. the man voice has been completely stripped away. He don't even have the energy to even speak anymore, mm. because when he does go to speak, it's like you said. The woman's point of view was, "I'm right, and if you don't follow my way, then it ain't gonna work." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So a lot of men have learned to just silence their it's voice. Quiet. Yeah. Mm. And you know what's funny? So I, I can see that, but. I think the same goes for women, but in a different way. They're not silencing their voice to to recognize things. A lot of women will deal with just deal with things mm-hmm. for the sake of dealing with them because it's like, oh, they ain't gonna get it. I just do it myself. Mm-hmm. That whole mm-hmm. maybe not. I'm right, but I got it. I can take it on. I can do this. Mm-hmm. And I always say that before I got into this relationship, I was one of them. Like mm-hmm. whatever, I I got it. I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And you kind of just learn to push down those annoyances, those things that frustrate you mm. in, that, in that way. And that's not helpful mm. to both of y'all. And to your point, the man stifling his voice when he has that woman that is, I know it all, is my way or the highway, mm-hmm. him stifling his voice is not helpful. Mm-hmm. So, but the thing about that is those ones in those situations, to me, mm it doesn't seem like that's gonna, it's not going to last or it's not mm-hmm. real because to me, real love mm-hmm. with another person, whether it be your relationship that way or, you know, mm-hmm. friendship, all of that is when you can correct someone mm-hmm. or speak about what you don't like and they understand that it's coming from a place of love. It's not coming from a place of demeaning you, trying to tell you you better. It's coming from them letting you know that, like I said, who you are is okay. Mm-hmm. But all of who you are is not always okay. Because there's parts of everybody that needs work. But if we're not speaking on what makes us uncomfortable from both sides, we're never going to be able to get to a space where we -hmm. can have those lasting relationships. Because even now, like, people get married this this month and they'll be divorced. For sure. January. Because we're, we're not being true. We're looking at social media. We're looking at... History and we're we're so I think we're so focused on hyping, either harping on the over sexualization, mm. all that like was it city girl city boy culture or Dudley Do Right, mm. Mrs. and Mr. Smith mm. like there's there's like those two mm-hmm. and it's not really something that you're doing from your core you're doing it because of the visual yeah because you want everybody to see you in in this light or that one because that's what's trending that's what's popular. Mm. And in order for us to get to a space where we're genuinely making each other better, we're hearing each other, we're listening to each other, you have to be able to communicate how you feel, Mm. whether it be the positive lovey-dovey feelings 
or those uncomfortable negative feelings that you're feeling about something. Because if you don't, we're going to keep on having this conversation. There's never going to be I, I don't feel, I don't feel like, from my observation, a man that has himself set up financially, he don't get that pushback. You see what I'm saying? He don't really, he don't really get that. So if a woman has an opinion that's dealing with someone who's set up, she just gonna, she's gonna have more of a silent voice mm -hmm. versus him. And she's gonna respect his position, which is why most women I feel is attracted to that. They want the position of a man who's financially successful, but they know deep down inside that it comes with certain options, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if, like, let me give you an example. If, the man is financially successful. He has everything set up for him. He don't really need her in that way, but sexually, or maybe a piece of arm candy or something like that. She's gonna deal with things that he'll do versus a brother that's maybe a janitor, mm. right? She, he's not gonna really have a voice in the household, but with the guy that's set up financially, he can pretty much run the show. Mm. Yeah, but those people should, that that's again they're still not communicating because yeah, you're course. stifling your voice. So it's, it, that's what I'm saying. Like it's just if you stifle your voice mm -hmm. and you just deal with it, then we're never gonna move forward. And to me, thought processes like that because yeah. I've never cared about someone's yeah. financial mm -hmm. stance because I was raised to go and get it for myself. Mm. Whether you got it or don't or not, I'm always gonna have it and. I'm never going to ask you for it. Mm. I'm someone, I, I've never even been comfortable taking money from a man. Mm. Like how, you know, girls like, oh yeah, he gave me this, he paid this bill. Mm. I don't need you to do that because I don't want you to have power over me. That, that mm. was my thought process with it. So I don't think that that's most women thinking about the financial aspect and that it's going to be, oh, well, let, me, let me shut up because he got the money. He wore the pants, he bring home the bacon. And I, maybe that's a little bit of what our problem is because men really think, that women have that mindset like, oh, yeah, if I got the money, I got the flash, all this, that's what I'm going to gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's those women out there that do that. Mm -hmm. And that's my, my like city girl, city boy, they want to be reformed. Yeah. They do that. Mm -hmm. Or those ones that grew up with that idea in their head of what their life is supposed to look like. So they may gravitate mm -hmm. towards a man that's more financially secure and stifle their voice. But those two people shouldn't be together. Because at the end of the day, you're not being your true self. And if you're in love with someone, if mm. you're in a relationship, y'all are working on making each other better, you both should be able to blossom in mm. all aspects of who you are. And if you're not, then you don't belong together. You're, you're doing what society wants. So that's still not, to me, that's still not. I'm just trying to figure out why, why is it more of an attraction for a woman to want to go in that direction? Why do they want to go in the direction of a man that they know that they're going to have to listen to because he is set up financially? Mm. And she's not going to have a voice. That's changing, brother. Right? That's changing. Uh, it, it's changing because yeah, because I don't, I don't see that. Yeah, because a lot of um, a lot of the brothers, even who um, follow the channel, are well to do. Mm. Um, but especially brothers who are trying to date now. If you're mm. trying to date women who quote unquote have their own. Mm. Um, they might mess with you, but cheat on you with the janitor. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Like women now are are, I, I think. The reason why we have so many uh, growing pains is the fact that back in the day, the power dynamic was a little clearer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And and there was a, it was easier to understand why grandpa needed grandma and grandma needed grandpa. But mm -hmm. now a woman who has her own and the whole nine, she's looking for you to play a different part mm -hmm. typically than used to be. Yeah. Uh, necessary back in the day. So yeah, I think women are still going to gravitate to and give more respect to uh, the man who is better. Mm -hmm. But we're finding like some women actually go for dudes who are lesser than them. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like we're talking yeah, about off camera yeah, yeah, for sure. because they're easier to control. control. They don't demand as Some much from you. Yeah. They, uh, they, uh, it's, it's an ego stroke knowing that he needs me. Mm, for sure. Right. For sure. It's, so I, I, I I think as women continue to go in that direction, um, it'll get harder to, for us to find ways to communicate mm -hmm. because with that ego growing, I don't know if women are gonna be as yeah. willing to communicate or replace. Mm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So no. they, they want the dude that's gonna play the PlayStation all day, come in his house, not if, really if, contribute to the bills, but- if, if he's exciting. If he's exciting, yeah. 
Because I, sure. I think there's a premium on uh, an excitement now. Just like we yeah. were talking about with, with, with sex. Sure. Like, yeah. people are bored. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So, the stability now is boring. Yeah. Right? Predictability is boring. You have yeah. to be spontaneous. You have to be mm. unpredictable. Yeah. Now, those things don't necessarily translate to good husband and father. Mm-hmm. But the reality is people aren't going for marriage the way that they used to. And I think it's yeah. only going to keep going in that direction. Some people don't want kids like they used to. So, if you Amen. take away... Marriage and kids. kids. Yeah, I just want excitement. Yeah, so stability isn't going to be at the top of the priority yeah. list like it used to be. So now yeah. it's about the dude who's exciting. Now it's about maybe flings. Yeah, as opposed to long term, long standing relationship. Mm-hmm. Maybe now long term, long term, long standing relationships are now instead of people getting married in their twenties, now they get married in their forties or fifties. Yeah. yeah, right. They're taking their time. Yeah, and I, I think we're gonna have to deal with that as a as a you know as a generation. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see that for sure, uh, the transition mm-hmm. and everything is taking place because, I mean, from my observation and, 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 and the people I talk to that's in relationships, that's married, that's only been together maybe two, three years, you know, they ready to part ways. I, I said that's why they be, mm-hmm. be divorced so quick because they don't, they don't do the work individually yeah. Yeah. But it, to it, truly it, come together and realize that I want health in, in my their, relationship. In their, in their defense, though, I don't think there was a time where marriage was better. Mm. I just think that what happened is... It was branded that way. No, no, no. I, I think it was graded differently mm. and it wasn't as easy to get out of. Oh, mm. yeah. So sure. back then it was graded on how long have y'all been together? Mm. So we could stay together for 30 years. Yeah. It's oh, miserable yeah. 30 years. To other people, we are a yeah. success. Yeah. This generation is saying, no, it's not about how long I've been at the job. It's about how, how well I can do it. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I think this transition is not just with love and romance, but it's across the board. Mm-hmm. Back then, the smart thing to do is find a good company and work for 20, 30 years, oh, get your yeah. pension. Nowadays, the smart thing to do is job hop every one and a half years yeah. and increase or double your salary yeah. every single time. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to quit think, a job. And I think it's only going in that direction. And then the other thing, too, is... I think it was easier for grandpa to just know that, oh, he got the baddest one in the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ain't no Instagram to see who's in the other cities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe once in a while you might get to go to Memphis and do some shit and yeah. come back home. But nowadays <laughs> you Memphis. open your phone it's right and there. every opportunity or, yeah. or, or, or possibility is at your fingertips. Yeah. And then you combine that with the fact that we're not grading ourselves based on how long we can be together. Marriages are not going to last long. No. Mm-hmm. We're not realistic with ourselves yeah. a lot of times. Mm-hmm. I mean, back when I was out here dating, I I didn't date realistically. I dated potential. Mm-hmm. I would date what you were saying, but not the reality of who you were. Come on now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that's the that's the fairy tale. You talk, talk you talking about. real nice, yeah. and you saying all this stuff that yeah. we could be and we're gonna do. We right. having that whole you know all night on the phone, texting, all that kind of thing, Mm -hmm. and not realizing you're not really doing the things that I myself want Mm -hmm. or need to feel secure with you. Mm -hmm. So I'm in my head thinking, oh, this is, I'm going to be with him. Mm -hmm. We're going to make it work. Mm -hmm. And ignoring that, yeah, we talking and we texting all the time, but what about when I can't get in contact with you and you give me some lame excuse? We Mm -hmm. make up these dates to do things and you flake. And I'm just like, oh, it's fine because I'm, I'm busy too. I'm working too. Right. But like, I was really dating what I hoped they would become. Mm. And I guess to y'all's point, I, I wasn't helping myself because I was doing those things like I was already in a relationship. Because again, mm. once I once I care about you, I'm nurturing. Mm. I'm gonna make sure you don't eat. Mm. If I'm out and I see something you might like, I'm gonna pick it up. And while, excuse me, I'll never say I was doing too much because it was genuine for me and it's, it's who I am. But I was doing myself a disservice because I wasn't dealing with the reality of who this person was. And by doing so, because I'm still like, I'm still giving you the cookie pie. So mm. like, <laughs> I'm there, cookie like you said, pie. there's no incentive mm. for you to do anything different because you've got what you needed and mm. you're in this place where it's comfortable. Mm. I'm not forcing more from you. So you're good. And then the minute I start being like, okay, and trying to demand more, you act like it's my fault or 
it, it mm. shifts into where then the Aquarius in me comes out. I just got to cut you off because now I realize, oh, you ain't going to give me what I want. Boom. Mm. Instead of me communicating with you mm. and seeing if possibly there could be more. So mm. like once I've gotten to my point where I'm like, you know what, I'm done. Mm. It was it was done. So I, I never gave the guy an opportunity to learn. But even though he you, like said, y'all, y'all could agree. You, you know, you're doing me wrong, bro. You know, you stringing me along. But yeah. I never truly like voice those emotions and feelings to them or try to, you know, come at a different angle. Mm. And I gave so much up front. It's like, I, whose fault is it really? I'm like, yeah, you did me wrong, but I did myself wrong first because I allowed you to. So you would say women fall in love with the idea of not what they all, think? I mean, not all women, but women in general. Sometimes, I don't say, a good part of us mm. go off of potential mm -hmm. rather than reality. But I, I think that was the mistake, not the fact that you gave too much. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. It was me. It, it was, was who you gave thing. it to. Yeah, it was definitely who I gave it to because, like I said, in my relationship now, I gave those things mm. and it's been reciprocated. The cookie mm. pie? The cookie pie. Don't you? That, <laughs> don't be trying to steal my stuff, neither. <laughs> Cookie pie, cookie no pie. no square, mm -hmm. my box, mm -hmm. all that, you know. The no no square. No no square. No no square. <laughs> no no square. <laughs> no, real no quick, like, like in college, bro. we had a song, me and my friends were like, stop, yeah, don't no, touch no. me there. That is my no no square. <laughs> oh, Shout out to the Woo Crew. <laughs> but oh, like, Lord. like literally, that, it was literally mm. on me. But then my girlfriend, I started communicating mm. when I'm like, okay, we need to move this along because I feel like I'm, I'm doing a lot. But that came with my own growth. Mm -hmm. Me understanding that we're getting, we're entering into this different level of the relationship, and I want to make sure that it's clear that what my intentions are. Mm -hmm. And then she was clear what her intentions are. But I never, I never had the maturity on my end to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's different now, in being in a relationship with a woman versus being in a relationship with a man? One hundred percent different. So you can compare that. Who you feel listen more? <laughs> Neither my girlfriend hard hit it. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I feel like, and this is hard for me because my my best some of my best friends are men. Mm. Like one of my guy friends called me bro. Mm. So I, and they listen when I like vent my problems out and give good advice back. So mm. I don't think it's a, a men versus women who listens better. I think it's a do you give a damn or do you not. Mm. Truly, do you care enough to listen? Mm. Because there are some great male listeners out there. Mm. I will never, never say that all men can't don't listen. Men listen very well when they want some ass. Hundred percent. But uh, but honestly, men men listen and hear you well if they care. Doesn't mean they always you always get it right. That's that's the point I was making earlier. Like y'all don't always get it right. You listen. And you try, but again, sometimes with that linear thought process, it just goes awry. I got a question I want to ask uh -oh. now that you said that. Mm -hmm. Because men listen well. I, I mean, we listen very well. Mm. But the thing is, a woman will break up with a man that don't listen well and go spill the beans to a man that don't listen well. You see what I'm saying? You understand where I'm going with because it? Because they haven't done the work on themselves to, and, and done their, themselves the service. So you, you understand what I'm saying? So it's like in, in, a, in a woman's mind, mm -hmm. they, they, they say men don't listen well. They break up with the guy that didn't listen well. Mm -hmm. Then they went to another man that they know don't listen well and spilled all the beans from the relationship that they was in. That man listened well. When he listened, he played nice with you to get everything that he wanted from you. So he listened well, and you fell in love with that all over again. You see how that cycle continues? Mm. So we kind of go through this, this, this cycle of, this man ain't listening to me, right? So mm. I fall in love with the idea that there's another man that will listen to me, right? So it's like, for instance, me and you in a relationship, I'm not listening to you. You go find one of your friends, your homeboys, and tell him everything that's going on in the relationship. Mm -hmm. He listening to you. He makes you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. He makes you feel secure. Enough for you to come out your panties. Then you realize he don't listen to you. Right? But you pretended enough to I'm get just saying here. It's a, say men it, are it, pretending it, like women pretend in some But she knew that the whole time is what I'm saying. Women follow this cycle. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They go through this cycle of, they'll say men don't listen. 
But then they'll find a man to listen or they think he's listening mm -hmm. enough for them to be comfortable enough for them to have sexual relations with him all over again. But mm -hmm. how is that the woman's fault if the man is... It's not is, the woman's fault. But, that, but that's the cycle. So that is what men have to work on. It's like, she don't know when she first started talking and devotion to this dude that he ain't going to be no... He ain't going to be shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, she doesn't know that. And he doesn't reveal his true colors until... He's pretended to be this person that she wants and that she desires. And then he switches up once he's gotten what he's wa he wants. So at that point, from a woman's standpoint, mm -hmm. well, what, what's going on? What, you, you've given me, my feelings are now in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm attached to you. I'm st and now I got to think back to, okay, before we mm -hmm. did all this, he was gi giving me this, doing this. So mm -hmm. that potential kicks in again. Yeah. I know he can be like this because he showed me that he is this person. Mm -hmm. So maybe I just got to switch this up, stifle my voice here because we love each other. We're, we're feeling each other. We, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's like you set us up for the okie doke. So we, we don't, we, we don't, we can't read your mind. We don't know that you're going to fuck us over in the end by even pre if, pretending. Even, even if she's walked through that door 20 times. She's walked through that door 20 times. You, what I'm walked, saying through, is, you walked through your house hundreds of times. But yeah. I bet you don't stump your toe on that damn bed post more than once. Yeah, but I'm saying if, uh -uh. She, if, nope. she's walked through the, <laughs> if she if she's walked through that door 20 times, I'm saying, does she take take the accountability factor into place to say, OK, well, I've been down this road 20 times. I've mm -hmm. heard the same story 20 times. I've been through the same experience 20 times. Why do I still fall for the same dude is what I'm saying. Because you don't My know point that is, dude. That, So if if the woman is falling for the same dude and the same characteristics, Right. OK, I, I hear you. You understand what I'm saying? You. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. I'm saying now, when is the accountability stepping on her side? I know the man is playing a <laughs> game. I know he's doing what he doing to, you know, play the part. I'm just saying, when does she say, you know what? I got to choose a better option. But how do you do that when you don't go in? Ex like you don't go in dating the same dude you just left because mm -hmm. you, you made the point. You said that you find this dude. He, he listens to you. Mm -hmm. He's giving you what you what you want, what you express. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not clicking with you that you told him how to treat you, and he's gonna manipulate that and just to get what he wants. So again, exactly. it's like yes, it's a vicious cycle, but who's to blame for it? Because it's not like we're we're going there saying I'm gonna find the exact same dude treat me the exact same kind of crappy way. We're not doing that. Like mm -hmm. we we don't know until we're in it. I agree, but the and point at the point we're in it, maybe we should turn around and be end it right then mm -hmm. or communicate how we feel. But that's. If I that man is pretending. Like, let me give you an example. If you graduated high school, right? You got your degree and whatever it is. There's going to be an interest of what man you choose to have a conversation with a date. In most cases, most women are going to choose what they're comfortable with as far as communication wise. Can I go hold this conversation with this lawyer? Probably not. So I'm going to choose the dude that's probably got a a smaller business because I got mine mm. and I can have a conversation with him. I'm saying that most women will date within a comfortable spectrum. What mm -hmm. I've seen, most women will date in a comfortable spectrum. They will never go outside of that spectrum of comfortability for them to even explore something different. So they run into the same circumstance and situation from my experience. But I think ultimately what it says is that listening skills are not as important to y'all as y'all make it seem. Exactly. Because I would actually say when, if I, if I was to like poll a group of men and a, a group of women, I think if I was to ask them, what, what are the top five characteristics you want from a partner? I think men would actually rank listening higher than women. Ironically, I, I think agree. women would hit a whole bunch of things before they got to listening. I think on the face, we would assume that. But what we see being rewarded in the real world is not listening skills in men. Mm -mm. The best male listeners are not the ones get the men who are successful with women. What I've learned is the men who can make her the most comfortable. Exactly. Is listening like part of that? Sure. But it's not a big part of it. It's just allow her to let her hair down. Mm -hmm. But if you let women tell it and if you let these mothers tell their sons, yeah, be a good listener. Buy her flowers mm -hmm. when it's really not ranked as highly as some people would lead us to believe. That, that's, like the, that's the point I was, was making. Thanks for clearing that up. Because mm -hmm. if you really think about it, right, we get, we get a bad rap for not being good listeners, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying we don't listen in a lot of senses. 
I'm not mm -hmm. saying we can't tune our ears up a little bit, but the reality is y'all will leave us and go to another man that won't listen to you or appear to listen to you. And you'll fall in love with the idea that he's listening to you. But the reality is, you know, he's really not. Yeah, it's not it's not as important as y'all make it seem. It's really not. It's important down the line. I don't, I don't know if I would say it's not as important by like a ranking because this is where, again, I think it just comes to that roadblock of you being a man, you being me and me being a woman because maybe we, you, you guys like to deal with the, the numbers and the rankings and all that stuff. No, I think we, we, we want to deal with what's going to get me in the door. I think y'all like to deal with what's going to keep you in the door. But as soon as I, you know, men will say, like, if you hit once, you can hit again. Mm -hmm. We feel like whatever I did to get to Harvard is going to be enough for me to graduate. Yeah. Whereas women are focusing on the things you have to do to graduate. Mm -hmm. When it's like, at that point, I already yeah. got you. You bonded yeah. to me. I gave you the good yeah. meat pie. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, and then, you, you didn't. You know what I'm saying? What's the point? Yeah. So my, my, my thing my thing is like if, if we want to see just like I was saying in episode one, if we want to see a transformation in the male delegation, it it starts with a transformation in the female delegation. When women start rewarding men for listening, we will see better listening men. For sure. Until then, y'all just talking. Until until y'all start saying, okay, you have to be dressed like this, you have to uh, present like this, talk like this, walk like this to get my cookie pie. Mm -hmm. Until that happens, mm -hmm. you won't see that. Exactly. In fact, what you because to your point about men being linear, a different way of putting that is men are efficient. A oh, different yeah, way of putting yeah. that is men are lazy. We want the path of least resistance. Exactly. And currently, the path of least resistance is not the stuff that y'all claim you want to see from us. And that's the confusion, especially when I think about young dudes. Because mm -hmm. we're hearing one thing from our moms and this, this, and that. But out in the world, nah, my homeboy who's smashing the most girls, he's not a good listener. Mm -mm. He's not nice. He's not kind. Uh, he might make you laugh more than me. Come on now. You know, and, and that's access. Because like they say, you make me laugh, you get the ass. I mean... <laughs> I mean, that's One just, giggle, boop, that, you I got mean, it. That's just how it go. But a woman to tell you that mm. if he's if he's if he has a personality, they fall in love with that more so than anything else. They'll overlook every circumstance and situation about the man if he mm. is this type of person that can entertain them, make them feel good, mm. make them laugh. You yeah. know, my my biggest thing, my biggest <clears> thing. <throat> I'm gonna come back to that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. My biggest thing with this whole manosphere and you know relationship talk stuff is. A lot of men, unfortunately, haven't had the opportunity to really learn the reality of women. Hmm. And I think a unique opportunity we have nowadays, like motherfuckers talking about Sukiyana and, hmm. and all <laughs> these like ratchet ass women. But one of the benefits is women today are far more honest than women of yesteryear. Uh -huh. They're far more transparent than women of yesteryear. Women haven't changed per se. No. They're just more vocal vocal and mm. bombastic about who they are and what they want. Mm. And now we have to deal with that. Yeah. But a lot of men, I think, are too in love with their idea or ideal of who they thought women were mm. and what they thought women want. And they don't want to divorce themselves of that. And that's why I think they get caught up mm. and they get got by women who know how to play the part. Mm. And that's why for me, I appreciate women. Yeah. Even, yeah. even if we disagree, like, yeah. she's authentic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's being honest because then I can deal with that. I can't deal with Two-Face over yeah. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Decide. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm listening. So, before I come back to you, <laughs> so, y'all been saying we ain't been, we ain't vocal. We're not choosing the right people. But mm -hmm. then you say that we are more vocal. So, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. kind of confused on it. because no, Y'all are more authentic. More authentic. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so it, it goes back to, like, I was talking about emotional intelligence versus emotional authenticity. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, emotional intelligence versus emotional performance. Mm -hmm. Women have always been more emotional, emotionally performative, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they're emotionally intelligent. Now, it looks that way because I, she's going to cry, she's going to laugh, mm -hmm. she's going to... But those emotions, she's just throwing them at the wall and seeing yeah. what sticks. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that women are more in tune with their emotion. And it's like, no, they're not. Yeah. What I'm asking for women to do is continue to be more honest but also 
in that honesty, be real about like, yeah, we saying we want a nice guy and a nigga who buy us flowers, but that's not who's getting pussy out here. Mm. That's 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 not who you know what I'm saying. That's not who gets our cookie pie moist. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So so then men can react accordingly because if that doesn't happen, what you're gonna have happen is men either have something traumatic happen to them or they just they grow up. They hit 30, 40, and they realize, oh shit, my whole life is a lie. Mm-hmm. Going back to the whole uh, um, idea of the red pill. Mm-hmm. The Matrix. You yeah. wake up and you realize, oh shit, this is all bullshit. Yeah. And then you create monsters. But I think if sure. those men's mothers, if the, the women in their lives, the media was honest in saying that, yeah, women say they want this, but it's more complicated than that. You have to be this, 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 mm-hmm. and this first. And actually, she'll forgive you for not being this if you are this. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can move accordingly instead of yeah. being upset. And because that, that the core of men's anger is like, I was lied to. Mm-hmm. So yeah, for sure. At the core of men's anger being you were lied to. Mm-hmm. You were, you were sold, told a disservice. You were sold a dream. Mm-hmm. So what men do in response to that is sell women more dreams. To your point of you become what you need to be yeah. to get the cookie pie. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a vicious cycle. It's, it's, it's a cycle. vicious sure. cycle. So yeah. And it, and it, feels, it feels like it feels like from y'all's perspective, it's you're putting the the ultimate resolution back onto women to fix this problem because you want us to start demanding all these things and having this list and all this. But if we start doing all these things and trying, and it doesn't yield those results because the man is a chameleon and becomes what we need mm-hmm. until he gets the cookie pie, then mm-hmm. we're back where we started and it's just gonna keep on going. So where yes, women have to take their accountability in the part that we play by, cause we do hold power mm-hmm. between our legs. I understand that. Mm-hmm. I do understand that if we withhold it and demand these things, mm-hmm. it very well could alter and shift and make both sides better, well relationships on both sides better. Mm-hmm. But again, that doesn't negate the fact that the man become, a lot of times becomes what he needs to to catch the woman that he feels that he wants. Like you say, the, the one that's got the money and the power that mm-hmm. wants the woman that is mm-hmm. the 10, cook and clean, bear my babies. You mm-hmm. want that, you become what you, you embody what, what you, you want, what you think likes. she's going to yeah, want. Right. Mm-hmm. So in the same way we kind of change up for it men do it too yeah. so I, I, men disa- have to- I disagree this, this is what i say so when women are upset at us they call us dogs mm-hmm. i don't think it's an insult i think men are absolutely dogs in the sense and and, and good bad and ugly in the sense that men are trainable just like for you sure. said men are linear mm-hmm. we are myopic we are very singularly focused mm-hmm. and with that being said we are not as dynamic as women like to think we are Oh, we know, we know. And so my point is, <laughs> my point is like, you know, Lee could probably break this down better than I can, but like dynamic range in photography and videography mm-hmm. is the ability to see the details in the light mm-hmm. and in the darkness. Mm-hmm. Women are far more dynamic than men. That song, I'm Every Woman. A woman can literally be 15 women at once. Uh-huh. Men mm-hmm. cannot do that. Mm-mm. And that goes back to what you said about potential. Mm-hmm. The problem is... Women fall in love with who she wants us to be, not who we are. Exactly. I've been telling women to fall in love with projection, not potential. I remember you saying so, that. So, yeah. so with that being said, if, if women were to look back at these mm-hmm. exes that uh, uh, pulled a rabbit out of a hat and tricked them so well, mm-hmm. they realized that that nigga was not a magician. You were just naive. Yeah, for <laughs> not, sure. I, you, I, I, I don't even want to say naive because naive makes it seem like y'all didn't know. I think y'all mm-hmm. fully know. It's just you would rather believe the fairy tale. For sure. That was my last, for right. sure. so that was it's, my last it's, relationship, it's, 100%. It's, it's blue pill in a for way. Sure. Like I would rather, I know this is bullshit, I know. but I would rather. Be, so I think if the reason I keep bringing it back to women, if women start saying kind of like in the, 50s or the 60s and 80s, you have to have a top hat, uh, double-breasted suit to talk to me. Niggas will have top hats and double-breasted suits tomorrow. Now, some niggas will be bad at doing that because that's not who they are and the the facade is not going to last. A woman could look at a man and say, okay, this nigga wears suits regularly Mm. versus this nigga going to court. Yeah. 
right? Mm -hmm. But over time, what we'll see is men being dogs, being singularly focused, being straight lined, will adjust themselves and become that to suit what the female delegation is literally rewarding. For sure. But until that, and if women decide that I would rather live in my fairy tale, then you will have these bad magicians. That's all That's these all. men who get women are. I've been that. They're just for bad sure. magicians. Yeah. I wasn't lying to her. Yeah. She wanted to believe the bullshit. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think men, I, I agree. think it's still a dream too. You, you, that on the last episode, we talked about when you were saying that if women said that they don't want no more light-skinned brothers, mm. oh. right? Mm. That, that was a, a, valid, a valid statement. Yeah. And I've been saying this for years that it's going to take take the woman to change the dynamic or the reality that we're dealing with. Mm. Because I have so much power and influence, mm. I don't feel like y'all want to step up to that plate. Right. Y'all don't want to step up to that plate because if y'all knew that y'all can raise better men, right? Be better wives, mm. create better environments. Why wouldn't y'all do that? Is, is the question. Mm. I feel like wouldn't? it's happening, but it happens in those relationships that are not... What, 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 Glamorize what, on social what, what, media. But we're talking about on the macro. Because okay. the, the thing that annoys me about this female empowerment movement is, in one sentence, there's this sister mother goddess uh, reverence that we now have of women. Women mm -hmm. are God, this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I brought up a, during a podcast that I did, um, and I said, okay, what's the number one killer of black people? Food. Food. Mm -hmm. What sure. part of culture do the, does the female delegation own in any community? Mm -hmm. Food. So if, if we're serious about changing things as a black community, can women own that? And I got mm -hmm. so much pushback. Oh, you want to blame the women for the heart disease? And oh, I tried to cook good for my boyfriend yeah. and my husband and he fought me and this, this and that. But yeah. it's like you don't get to own all the critical acclaim and all the benefits of having authority and having power and being a goddess mm -hmm. without any of the responsibility. For sure. So if you want to be a goddess, here's a list of responsibility and here's a list of things. If they go bad, it yeah. is your fault. Yeah. And I think, I think the same thing for men. For sure. So when we see the insecurity in the black community, that's black men's fault. Mm -hmm. When we see, uh, uh, um, you know, the, the, the fact that a lot of boys would rather go into athleticism as opposed to mm -hmm. uh, STEM, that's men's fault. Mm -hmm. But if we see kids who can't read at grade level, that's women's fault. Yeah. And what's wrong with us saying that? They'll say the, daddy, the, the father wasn't around. They'll still put it on They'll men. still put it on the father. And the, to, to, to your point of being able to, to just acclaim that, Mm -hmm. Just that responsibility, right? Just to say, okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna cook better for my family, my children, on a nurturing level, mm -hmm. right? Like instead of me giving my kids the oodles and noodles, I'm gonna give them the fruit, mm -hmm. right? Just just raising her awareness to that point, to where as though she can say, you know what, I am gonna equip myself better to better suit to be able to raise this family. And to be a, a good spouse to my husband, to be a leader or a goddess or whatever she mm -hmm. feel like she want to be at, at the time, if she can't even step into that line of responsibility, mm -hmm. like you're saying, what makes her valuable enough to demand all of these demands that she's having for a man today? Yeah. Hmm. So, I'm going to be honest, when you first started your spiel, <laughs> in my head, I was yeah. cussing you out. <laughs> I'm not going to lie because the whole, it's your fault, blaming they're trigger words. Mm. But as you continued and clarified. You got to let me get I, all the way I did. That's why, that's mm -hmm. why I just sat here. I, 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 I'm cool. I cooled down because mm. I was hot in the pit <laughs> for a second. But I cooled down. And oh. I'll, I'll explain why. Because women have taken on a lot mm. for a lot of years, especially black women. And to be blamed for things like the whole, like if you're an allergy food, that is, my, that is my best way of showing someone that I love them. Mm. If I've never cooked for you and fed you a meal, I don't really rock with you like that. Mm. Like, we cool, mm. but now don't start asking for no damn food, Alan. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, that's, that's weird. Like, that's, yeah. that's me. And it's like, 
from the perspective of, okay, the food is unhealthy and we're the ones that make it, I go back to my mom being a single mom who didn't always have time to make, oh, let me think about how nutritious this meal is going to be. Mm. But I know these chicken wings, these pork meat and wings, going to feed a lot of people at one time and it's going to be quick and I ain't got to be in there all day. Mm-hmm. Plus, I got to check my kids' homework to make sure they're spelling and reading. I go over the spelling word so it's correct. Make sure that they're, they're, you know, that they're doing their schoolwork. Oh, and I got to mm-hmm. make sure the house is clean. All that fell on her. So mm-hmm. inside of me gets offended when you say things like that because it's like, first the motherfucking oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're yeah. the ones that are keeping things, sure. keeping things mm-hmm. going. Sure. So I think that's probably where a lot of women come from because mm-hmm. that's, like I said, it, it, you, 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 yeah. you PMO'd me just now mm-hmm. <laughs> real bad. But mm-hmm. I understand what you're saying. It's when you t- likened it to where men are failing, mm-hmm. I get it. So, in my household, my girlfriend has come to the stage of a lot of our health problems are connected to our food that we eat. Mm-hmm. So, we need to start eating better. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was hesitant at first. Mm-hmm. What the fuck you mean? Because <laughs> who the fuck wants some kale? You better get them collars so I can put this pork fat in them and fuck them up. You know what I'm saying? But, mm-hmm. I had to understand, you're doing this so that we can be better. Mm. So while I'm not going to completely go, okay, I'm going to go full force at it, mm-hmm. I understand that you're coming from a place of you want to be healthy, you want to be better. Mm-hmm. And I cook the majority of the food in the house, so I need to work on what I'm preparing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's made a difference now. I, your girl mm-hmm. like kale. I never thought I would like it. Mm-hmm. I can, I'm more open to trying those things because she showed me the way on it. Mm-hmm. And we're both women, so I get where you're saying with it because I wouldn't have had that thought process to try more things. Mm-hmm. If she hadn't have put that in my head and like put it out there to me and showed me the benefits of it, and now I'm reaping the benefits of it, I understand it. Yeah. So I understand where you're coming from, where we have to be the ones to kind of put our foot down. But like I was over here boiling, it's frustrating because with all that we do and all the hats that we wear in a day, mm-hmm. a week, a month, a year. It's like, oh, blame us for some, uh, something else. We don't get the credit we deserve all the time, but we get the blame. Mm-hmm. That's, where I, that, that's from I'm my sure. perspective. Even though, you, even though you said what blame men have, yeah. what I heard was what women did. And the things that I, that I do and work too hard to show my love for my family, like cooking, mm-hmm. you're criticized. It sounds like criticism when it's really not, but it sounds like it. I, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, say, I'll say this. And again, this might not hit well either. But I think back to your analogy about men being more... Mm-hmm this and women being, being more this. Um, have, have y'all ever seen that, um, it's like a meme or, or a short video of a, of a kid who's supposedly drowning, but all he needed to do was stand, stand up. up. Yeah, I saw that. Mm. That's a lot of women. Mm. Mm-hmm. A lot of women put themselves in more difficult situations to then get credit for their ability to navigate those difficult situations. Sure. And I think that's where I want to bring the conversation back to, Mm -hmm. because even the example of the woman who is working three jobs to raise five kids Mm -hmm. and the whole nine, she was the same woman. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women will say, well, I was young and I was dumb, who Mm -hmm. made the decision to get pregnant by four different men who she knew would not be responsible enough to take care. So but but then we frame it. We start the story a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what frustrates men with she's busting her ass and she's doing, quote unquote, the best she can. To now take care of five kids without starting the story in, she put herself in that. Now, and I understand it's more complicated than that. A lot of women mm-hmm. have trauma and it leads them to uh, sexual promiscuity mm-hmm. that inevitably leads them to having mm-hmm. multiple. multiple kids and mm-hmm. a more difficult life. And they have mental health issues in the whole nine. Yeah. But again, I think the bigger picture is you cannot own the praise without owning the responsibility. And I think a lot of men now Mm -hmm. are saying that, hold up, wait, I've been taught all my life to give mom praise for doing quote unquote, the best that she could. Mm -hmm. Now I understand that she could have done better. She could have done better from jump by not getting pregnant by my quote unquote, deadbeat daddy. She could have done better from jump by not doing all the different things that she did to traumatize us, to, to take out her trauma on us. 
So this idea that we continue to push of like women are benevolent and they're always just doing the best that they can. That goes for men, too. But that's not part of his narrative. Mm -hmm. It's not part of his narrative that he was touched when he was eight. And that's yeah. why he ended up being a man whore. Mm -hmm. He was touched by a 21 year old woman. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So my thing is, OK. I want our community to improve. Mm -hmm. This and this and this and this and this is what I think the men, the male delegation needs to do. This and this and this is what I think the female delegation needs to do. And these are all the, the, the ways that each delegation should take credit. Mm -hmm. And these are all the ways, the same ways they need to take responsibility. I think we frame it as blame because that's what it sounds that's what, like. That's what it felt mm -hmm. like to me. But it's not, it's not blame. Mm -hmm. It's ownership. It's, it's ownership. responsibility. Yeah, yeah. So if we're saying black men are God, black women are goddesses, yeah. what's your domain? Yeah. You got to step into that responsibility. Mm -hmm. You got to be, you got to be that wholeheartedly, mm -hmm. you know, like from what you walk to what you talk. Yeah. Right. That has to be the essence of who you are. Mm -hmm. Right. So is, it brings me back to the conversation about ownership. Right. Mm -hmm. Like in my household, right, I'm Jada God Seven. It ain't just Jada God Seven because that sounds like a good name, mm. right? It's Jada God Seven because I carry myself godly and godlike. So if she sees that and the kids see that, they follow that. Mm. They don't just be like, oh, you know, this is somebody that has a unique name that sounds catchy. This is the person that's getting in the, in the, uh, in the kitchen juicing, right? Waking up four or five o'clock in the morning, hitting the treadmill, right? Whatever it takes. I'm emulating change so that it can be a reflection so that my queen can be a queen and not just one who states that, mm -hmm. right? So if she doesn't reflect what I am, I don't reflect what she has reflected, then it's, it's null and void. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So like you're saying, if I'm taking that responsibility and she's taking that responsibility, then we can see the manifestation of what a family unit should look like. I'll say that because I just thought about something when you just said it. I think part of our issue as a community is religion. Y'all stay with me. For sure. Because when I, when, I, when I thought about this whole God, goddess phenomenon, mm -hmm. we are taught that we can never blame God. Mm-hmm. He may not always come when you need him, but he's always on time. Mm -hmm. God never gets any blame. So now if you think of yourself as a quote unquote God, mm -hmm. you don't associate that with responsibility. Mm -hmm. You don't associate that with blame. You just associate it with authority. Yeah. And I think for some black men and I think for some black women, mm -hmm. that's where this narcissistic ego is coming from of just worship me. Yes. Just focus on everything about me. That's lovely. Yeah. Just focus on everything about me. That's great. Mm -hmm. But don't hold me to any standard. Yeah. For if sure. this goes wrong, it's not my fault. It just mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. And you exactly. should be glad that I'm here with you to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're hundred percent right. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about like, um, with my lady, we've been together 10 years. Yeah. When, I first met her as she started to, to transition and change, mm. right? I decided to give her a name and I said, well, you know what? Your name is gonna be Queen Refinement. And she said, why are you giving me that? I said, because you went through the process of refining yourself. You've decided to change because you wanted to change based on the information that was given to you. You just didn't just, I just didn't wake up one day and say, that's who you are. This is what you earned, right? I didn't just give you a title to yourself. And she had to learn to walk in that. Mm. And one day she came to me. She's like, I think this is too much responsibility for me. Mm. Right? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, I think it's too much responsibility for me. I said, no, it's not too much responsibility for you. It's just that now that you're aware to who you are, when you look in the mirror, right? I've taught you to do that. Look in the mirror at you, mm. right? It's never about me controlling the dynamic of the relationship. It's about the value of what I instilled in you to control that. And once you got that value, the only person you can look at is yourself, right. right? It ain't me no more, it's you. Because now you are the reflection of what I am. You just can't, it's no more, uh, you, you wanna be in control conversations, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It used to be that. Mm -hmm. Right. And to bring it back to men, like me, me being a father now, I've, I've learned so much and I've gained such an appreciation of masculine energy Mm. Because even now, like I'll, I'll notice my my little daughter, she's two, 
And her mom can say, sit down. But she says it in such a loving way mm. that she'll sit down if she feel like it. I could just look at her and she runs to the nearest seat and sits sure. down. Because she knows that, like, my first job is not nurturing. Mm -hmm. my, my first job is getting your ass in line. Exactly. Right? And I think what's happened, because a lot of our families have been just that maternal nurturing energy, mm -hmm. people don't know how to take the, this is what you need to be, this is what you need. Because... Yeah. No offense to y'all, y'all's nature is to coddle, to love, to mm -hmm. the, the worst behaved dogs yeah. that I've ever come across are dogs owned by women. Yeah. For sure. Think about it. I'm thinking about my baby. She, <laughs> yeah. she lit, my girl listens. She just but, but, she but the sometimes. best behaved dogs do. Oh. Them dogs don't get on the couch. They know daddy gonna whoop your exactly. ass. Exactly. But the women, oh, you just sleep in the bed with them. Oh, you no, know, we don't play that. I'm just saying, you know, in most cases, yeah. right, you mm -hmm. see certain, like, to bring up the dog factor where the woman is okay with the dog going mm -hmm. outside, then jumping in the bed. Mm -hmm. Where well, the man ain't going to, you know, ain't <laughs> you're going for that. It. Yep. So it is, there is a difference. And it's not a, a um, to belittle a woman in right. any means. It's just to be informative on just these small changes can create such powerful influences. Right. Right. If we just look at you say the macro, we just look at the macro and start making adjustments to say, well, just let me cook a little better in my household. Right. Let me hold a healthier conversation in my household. Let me not just always live my trauma in my household, but let me live what has changed and influenced my life in my household. You see, everything starts to it start to change. And, Even. Yeah. And, and the thing is, women. And, and this is this is what inspires me but also kind of breaks my heart about this whole thing mm -hmm. i think y'all don't give yourselves enough credit for sure women are freaking pop even in this manosphere space we're talking about the whole red pill some of the most successful creators as far as lucrative yeah. are women for sure in a space full of men who yeah. hate women yeah. the yeah. most successful <laughs> creators are women yeah. which tells me that female approval Female insight is so, even for the men who aren't conscious enough to recognize it, mm -hmm. it is so, so, so valuable. So what I'm telling my sisters is, listen, if y'all want to see better men, you have to be better women. Have to. Because Melanie King get a lot of pushback. She get a lot of pushback. <laughs> they don't even like, you know who Melanie King is? Yeah. Mm -mm. Melanie King is, she's like the, the, the female version of Kevin Samuels. Well, I don't mm. believe her. Though. Right? I don't, I don't believe her. Don't but her I'm just saying, she get a lot of pushback. Her. You know, she kind of fell in that, that mm. whole space. But, 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 but the, the beautiful point about that is like with her, if you listen to her more than five minutes, you yeah. know, she don't know what the hell she's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know. But because yeah. she look good and she's saying yeah. what niggas want to hear, mm -hmm. she's, she's yeah. one of the most successful so, in the space. Exactly. So if what I would like to see instead of this mass movement of, of women telling us all the ways that we are failures as, as men, mm -hmm. if that energy was being put into, okay, what kind of masculinity are we rewarding? Mm -hmm. And what kind of masculinity are we nurturing as well? Mm. Just like I said during episode one, the worst men you will come across are men raised by women. Yeah. And the best men you will come across, the quote unquote That's most right. uh, chivalrous men you'll come across are men who were raised by their fathers. For sure. Just by their fathers. Yeah. So what does that say? It's not to say women are not necessary in raising boys, but women play a part either in our ascension or our downfall. Even with daughters. Even with fathers daughters. raise some of the best daughters. Mm -hmm. I mean, statistically, mm -hmm. I mean, it shows that the father, if the father is present, he has a better impact in the children's life than the mother. So I'm going to circle back a little bit, then come back. Because yeah. when you were speaking about your wife mm -hmm. and how you bestowed upon her this title, what you do is because you spoke life into her. Yes. You reinforce things in your home. Mm -hmm. You lead by example. Yes. So you pave the way for your family. Yes. You show them through your doing what you expect so they have, like your children have the example of what a man, a good man does, how he treats a woman. Mm. Most of us were raised by single mothers. Yes. Who don't have that example. Mm -hmm. So we're taught to fend for ourselves, to be strong, mm -hmm. to survive. We're taught survival. Mm -hmm. We're not taught how to mm -hmm. love. What my mama didn't even bring, like she would 
let guys come, like a couple guys come over, but it's only like two or three mm-hmm. select ones. I never saw my mom kiss a man. Mm-hmm. She, I don't even think my mom hugged a man in front of us. Like I never saw a, a healthy male, female relationship, my mom and a man. Mm-hmm. And any guy she was dealing with, you better know you come over there and be respectful to us because she didn't mm-hmm. take no stuff, but like I never saw it. Right. So I had to, and the only other relationship I had to go off of was my grandma, my, my grandpa and his wife. Mm-hmm. And all I saw out of that was my grandpa drove her around. She did the cooking, the cleaning. He didn't really do much else. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. he provide, he worked and provided for the household, cooked sometimes, but really he was just the man and she was the woman that kept the mm-hmm. house going. But I wasn't there all the time. It was just mm-hmm. randomly that I saw them, you know? So from my perspective, I lacked on mm. understanding what a man was supposed to be, mm. how he's supposed to behave, how he's supposed to do, mm. make you feel. I have an older brother who's like my protector. He mm. made sure he always made sure I was safe. He taught me how to fight in case I had to defend myself. Mm. So I wasn't like, it, I, I feel like I, I missed out mm. yeah. by having the male influence there. So even to y'all's points about how, who raises the best people, we can say, yes, if it's a, just a woman, there's a bunch of negatives with it. But if the man is missing from all of that. Mm-hmm. Women don't thrive in survival mode. That's the thing. Women, we don't. Women can, re- and, and that, that's, that's something that's kind of fascinating. Like true authentic femininity can only really exist when it is being, sh- I don't want to say shepherded, but safeguarded by masculinity. Mm-hmm. Because when it's not being safeguarded by masculinity, femininity turns into masculinity. For sure. I, I can totally I can, agree. To your point, because I, I used to be a very hard person. Mm. Very hard. And I can, my friends would tell me, also it, would, it wouldn't click, but one of my greatest male influences, besides my brother, is probably Lee. Mm. Like, Lee let me know, all right, Portia, I understand where you're coming from, but you got to cool back. You got to peel back. Mm. But he also explained to me why I had to peel back mm-hmm. and showed let, me a better let, way. Let's, let's put a pin in it because that oh. camera's off. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, 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 yeah, we, we've been, we've been oh. going. So oh, my bad. My we're, bad. We're going gonna to pick up from there okay. um, episode three. So okay. please mm-hmm. uh, make a note of that, like where we left off, um, because I'm going to start with you. And also from yeah, episode one. Yeah, absolutely. From episode one, you brought up... Um, when men get their stuff together, they leave you for a, a good woman or whatever, a, a mm. white woman mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. So we're going to pick up there as well. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank for y'all. Sure. Oh, yeah. I didn't and, know what time uh, it was. Yeah. Great, this, great this, show this, tonight. This, yeah, this was I great. I like you know, talking to you We touched y'all. on some good, I'm good topics. I'm telling you I was cussing you out, but then you brought it back. <laughs>